Well, Doug Herbert is joining me here on set. Doug, as you saw there, uh, sending of this delegation to Washington to discuss its planned offensive in Rafa. Is it a sign that Joe Biden and Benjamin Netanyahu are trying to find common ground after this period, really, of deepening rifts? A lot of people would like to read it that way, um, but going by past precedent, we don't really see signs that that rift is, is healed, let alone those divisions uh, healed. Look, Bottom line here, Joe Biden has become more and more frustrated, Stuart, with the way Israel has conducted this major military operation in city after city in Gaza, destroying, leveling, bombarding, bombing, leaving tens of thousands of civilians either dead, injured, so on and so forth. Um, he wants and he knows he needs to do something about it. He is facing political backlash in the U.S. with the election looming. But it's not just a matter of cold uh, calculus of politics. Uh, he also vehemently believes that, although he cannot say it for political reasons, that Netanyahu is doing the wrong thing. He sort of agrees with what uh, uh, the Senator Ch uh, Charles Schumer said uh, last week when he said that Israel needs elections, uh, literally calling for regime change. Uh, obviously, Biden didn't use those words. The White House hasn't explicitly endorsed them, but he did say it was a good speech. Uh, and if he could speak up, my hunch is that uh, Biden would want to say exactly that to Netanyahu. These are men saying they have deep rifts, deep divisions. Biden fervently champions Israel. He believes fervently Israel has a right to defend itself. He fervently does not like Netanyahu. He cannot say that. He will not say that. You will not hear those words from him. But this is what this is about. He has time and again urged caution prudence, sobriety on Netanyahu in the way he wages his campaign. Time and again, Netanyahu has all but snubbed uh, his biggest uh, benefactor in terms of the sheer amount of weapons and supplies. What this really is, is Netanyahu throwing a little bone to Biden, but it doesn't mean by sending a delegation of humanitarian and military and intelligence officials to Washington to talk about the road ahead. Does he have a plan for Rafah? Does he have a plan for protecting the uh, million plus civilians who have uh, fled there seeking a sanctuary and shelter? Does he have a plan for protecting them? But beyond all of that, uh, this is a way of at least trying to buy some time. But not, Netanyahu, he's made it clear. It's not me saying it. He has said his red lines are his red lines. And his ultimate red line is making sure Hamas is never in a position to stage such an attack again. He and Biden are still poles apart, even if they're going through some of the motions of looking like that they're seeing eye to eye. Other Israeli negotiators, Duggar and Qatar, for talks. Any uh, hope of any breakthrough there? Well, there's always hope. Uh, but even as the White House has said, it's uh, the, the deal, using White House speak, is has been more elusive than we have hoped, meaning, no, there has not been a deal so far because ultimately uh, the, the calls, you know, for a mosque, for a ceasefire have been met with a absolute, uh, you know, rejection, outright rejection so far from Israel. Now, might Israel be coming around and bending, willing to have sort of something more approaching a ceasefire in exchange for the release of perhaps 40 or more of the estimated 100 hostages? Is still being held by Hamas and its allies in Gaza? Sure, that's possible. But we have sort of these parallel efforts right now because as those talks are underway or getting underway in, in, in Qatar among Egyptian officials, Qatari uh, officials, uh, and also uh, with some uh, U.S. Uh, mediation in there, presumably, you have Biden, uh, Biden, sorry, uh, Anthony Blinken, the Secretary of State, who's going to be heading from the Philippines to the Middle East on what will be his sixth regional trip since this uh, war, latest war started in Gaza. And he is going to be meeting with senior Saudi and Egyptian officials. Same thing here. Forefront. Front and center, Stuart, humanitarian effort at a time when UN agencies are staying, saying that extreme food shortages mean that there are exceeding famine levels across all of Gaza and that 100 percent of Gaza's population, 100 percent, is now in humanitarian, in, in need of humanitarian aid and that famine could be imminent, not a prospect, but imminent. At that time, that's why these talks are all taking uh, place against an urgent humanitarian context. Uh, he's going to be pushing, yes, for the obvious things we know, the ceasefire, the plan for post-war, what happens in Gaza for its government, the security of the Palestinians there. But getting food to them is going to be a giant part of these talks. Can Biden, uh, can Blinken, and can uh, the negotiations in Qatar and Egypt try try to get some sort of lasting regional uh, stability and peace that will allow that needed aid to get in to dying, to desperate and dying civilians. Doug, thanks so much. International Affairs commentator Doug Herbert on France 24.